Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius X Church for the Eucharistic celebration on the first Sunday of Lent. Join me in praying the stewardship card. It's the orange card, prayer card in your pew. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear, Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, my parish, my parish is, is composed of people like me. I help I make it what it is. If I am friendly, friendly if I am. Its views will be filled if I help fill them. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and love, and a parish with a noble spirit if I, who make it what it is, and filled with these same things. Therefore, with your help, O God, I shall dedicate myself to growing our faith by being all things that I want my parish to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. If you are a visitor, thank you for joining us today, and you're welcome back any time. If you're staying and residing in Randolph County, we request that you register with our parish if you haven't already done so. Register packets are available in the back of church. At this time, please turn off all cell phones if you've not already done so, and stand and greet your neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins, and ask God mercy and forgiveness, so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grand Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of clay, of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of these trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Stand by. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man's sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men in as much as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, through sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, ever over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. <clears throat> but the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, for much more did the grace of God and the gracious, gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for many. And the gift is not like the result of one who sinned, for after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift after many transgressions brought a quittal. For if by the transgressions of the one, Death came to reign through that one. How much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through the transgression, condemnation came upon all. So through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the, one, of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, it is written, one does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, 
You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the first Sunday of uh, Lent, the readings kind of uh, help us to understand why Jesus had to come to this world. The whole purpose of the mission of Jesus is explained in all these readings. We'll try to understand it. The first one, of course, the a second narration of uh, human creation. The first one, of course, is just God created man in his image and likeness, and that's it. In the second narration, we have this uh, long story of uh, God actually picking up the dust and from the dust making Adam and then Eve. The, the whole name, Adam, it's actually Hebrew, Adamach. And Adamach means soil, dirt, earth, uh, light brown. That's the meaning of it. Earth. Then from earth, again, a few days ago we thought about it. From dust, you come. To dust, you go. It's all connected. And then, of course, once Eve came to existence, uh, he calls her Eve. Of course, in Hebrew, it's not Eve or uh, Hawa. It's actually C-H-A-V-A. -A. It's H Hawa. It's hard for us to pronounce. Don't worry. I, yeah, okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> because we have only S H in English, but this is more a H. Okay. So Hawa means, it of course comes from the root that means life or to life. So Eve means mother of all who are living. That's the meaning of Eve. So we have Adam, complete earth, and then Eve, mother of all who live, all living human, or all human beings, basically. So by understanding that, God created them. So God is God, and these are creation. And of course, the, uh, the scene of uh, the conversation between uh, Eve and the serpent help us to understand that there was this uh, tree of life, of course, and then, of course, the tree of uh, uh, knowledge or wisdom. The key element is there in any relationship, the main factor is the factor of trust, right? Trust. If there is no trust, there is no relation. So God established this rule, of course, as part of this uh, binding relationship, a matter of trust. And of course, the challenge of trust is always in everyone's life, right? It's always there. Why this knowledge is going to make a difference? Because the difference is God is the creator and we are creation. The creation cannot be God. That's a starting point. Okay, now we have to focus on what happens there. The sin that Adam committed, keep in mind, interesting, he preferred to listen to his wife rather than listening to God. Okay, don't feel bad about that. 
all the wives here, okay? It's nothing against any wife, but try to understand the concept is he preferred to listen to his wife rather than listening to God. God is the creator and his wife is the creation. Keep that in mind. That's the context. Now, the next level, the sin of Eve was she decided to listen to the serpent rather than the creator. You follow me? Yes. So that was her sin. God created them and God gave them a law and they decided to listen to the creation, not the, to the creator. And of course we know the serpent is a symbol of evil. And the evil is also a creation. He was, God did not create evil, but it's good that became bad is evil. And we know the fall of the angels and how the good becomes bad. And once we have bad, the bad wants others to be bad. Like one apple, you know, bad apple can make all the other apples bad, right? That's the same logic that we see in that temptation that Adam and Eve go through. And then what happens? They were actually going around and talking to God all the time, a good relationship, it's lost, broken trust. That's what happens. The original sin is basically broken trust. And whenever we go through that in our own lives, I'm sure many a time you realize the same thing. Broken trust. It's not easy to rebuild that. Right? Yeah. And that's when the Adam and Eve realized they were naked because they realized that that relationship of tight relationship is lost and then become strangers. While becoming stranger, that's when one realized, hey, I am naked. The broken trust. I cannot go to God anymore. I have to hide from him. That's a human approach. Of course, not God's approach. God wants us to be back anyway. But God cannot, or he doesn't want to just fix everything in a one word, right? It's a process. It's a process. Now we leave that whole original sin there. And we said, listening to the creation, not to God, was the big temptation. Now we jump into the uh, life of Jesus. If you go through uh, the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there we see this uh, same reality. But keep in mind, we said Adam, earth, and he failed. If from Adam, again earth, she failed. Broken trust. If you go to the Old Testament, you will come to the second stage, the stage of Noah. Noah? Know what Noah means? Noah means comfort. So from total brokenness, in the course of the history of salvation, you come to the next figure, it's called Noah. Noah means comfort. And then you come to the third person, the third one, Jesus. Yehoshua means salvation. It's a long process from failure, brokenness, to comfort, to total salvation in Jesus. But Jesus is going through this trial of this temptation and to understand that, you have to understand the 40 years of uh, the people of Israel in the desert. What were their three challenges? The first challenge was the challenge of food. They did not have enough food to eat in the desert. Food. And then they prayed to God and God gave them the manna and the locust and all the other things. God provided them, not anyone else. The second trouble that they had to face in the desert was the issue of protection. They were open in the desert and no protection from anything. You can see the stories of uh, these serpents, you know, attacking them and killing them. And finally God saves them from the, their enemies, from the serpents, from what not. It's God who saves them, not anyone else. The third challenge is the challenge of uh, having 
the promise, the possession of the promised land. It was not easy for them to get into the promised land. The time, 40 years. And they had to fight with, against all the inhabitants of that area to get into the promised land. The possession of the promised land. Three big trials. In all those three trials, it's only God who provided them with the answers, not anyone else. Now keep that in your background, in your mind, and we enter into the three temptations of Jesus. What is the first one? It's all about food. Food, again, I think I told you last year that a piece of bread is actually stone. You don't believe it. If you go back, it's actually dust. Yep. It's actually dust, and that dust is stone. It took a long time. It's all minerals, right? It's all elements. That's what it is. Your body is the same thing, and the bread is the same thing. Anything that has life is basically dust. Transform. It took a long time. Not just stone to bread but long process of transformation. But the, again, the first one is the temptation of food. The second one, we jump into the people of Israel in the desert. Jesus, the second temptation is all about protection. You jump and they will take care of you. The temptation of protection. And the evil says, hey, trust me. We'll take care of you. The third one is again the possession of the promised land. You will be the, the king of the whole universe if you worship me. But Jesus again, he's the new Adam and he opts a different approach. Instead of listening to the creation, he listens to his father. That's what all the, the three approaches, that three answers that he uses are the answers. He is using the word of God. Instead of going to the creation like Adam, listening to Eve, and listening Eve listening to the serpent, Jesus is listening to his father. And his father is giving him the answers. Because he knew that only his father can take care of him. No one else, nothing else. And the first Sunday of Lent, that's what Jesus reminds us. The people of Israel reminds us the whole plan of salvation in Jesus. Because he decided to listen to the Father, the Creator, not the creation. In him, through him, salvation has arrived. The whole plan of salvation, the true meaning of original sin, and how through his obedience to his father, his decision to, li to listen to his father, things are changed. And when we enter, we have baptism today, when we enter into his life through baptism, we possess his life. And we don't become gods, but we become God's children. That's the difference. In Jesus, through Jesus, we become God's children. We listen to people for various reasons. Sometimes we listen to people because we know them. Right? Even if they tell you things that are really bad, you still listen to them because you know them. Even if you know that they are not trustworthy, they are telling you that not that the the truth, just a lie, you used to listen to them because you know them, right? Yes. The other approach is, what Jesus reminds us today is, listen to others if they are trustworthy. If they tell you the truth, listen to them. Otherwise, we have a duty to correct them. Not just because I know him or I know her. Not just because she or she is telling me something that I like. That's not a guarantee of the veracity of the information. 
Trust is built up on time. So the challenge that I have for uh, you all for this land and season is is 40 days of land. We have all of you are I think all really good practicing Catholics. Wonderful. Thank you for being that. But we have a lot of Catholics who are not practicing anymore. Or they practice once in a while. And we have Catholics who never practice. We said already. And those who are not, you know, Christians by any. This land can we help our brothers and sisters listen to God. No to other creation. Can we help at least one person? Just you. And can you bring back one person? You have 40 days. Can you work on that? Sometimes when you tell somebody, hey, can you come back? They may not like it. Because they think they have done something wrong already and they are naked. They feel that guilt in them, that they don't want to come back. But the invitation of God is open to everyone. In Jesus, God is not punishing us. In Jesus, God is saving us. So when I invite someone to come to church, I am just telling him, God loves you. And God wants to save you. That's the message. Nothing else. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings, and we ask him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in others. For Pope Francis and all bishops around the world, may the Lord guide them in their mission to bring Christ to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, May the Holy Spirit guide them in placing the needs of their people before their own. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with physical or spiritual hunger, may the Lord provide for them an abundance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community and our quest to grow in the service of the Lord, may God give us strength and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized, especially Kaylee and Stackline, who will be baptized after this Mass, may she always walk in the light of Christ, guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for married couples, that their love for each other may be reflected upon those around them, providing a sign of Christ's love for us, the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those celebrating a birthday this month, may the candles that represent the years of your life be a reflection to others of your love for Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith, may the Lord bring them to the light of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of... I apologize. For the intentions of this Mass, which is for the work and blessings of the Benedictine Sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, 
taught us to cast out the leaven of malice so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and from by divine issue, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished hope increased and charity strengthened we pray o lord that we may learn to hunger for christ the true and living bread and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through christ our lord amen amen please be seated Well, Mass this uh, coming Tuesday will be in the morning at 8 a.m., not in the evening because of our, our deanery meeting. Our first Lenten soup supper this Friday in the Undercraft. Please see bulletin for details. Stations of the Cross every Wednesday at 6 p.m., the exception for this week due to some, uh, some other issues. So this week it will be at 6.45 p.m. A Lenten materials are in the back of the church. And I will be uh, visiting all the homebound, the nursing homes, all those people uh, during the week of uh, March 12th and also March 19th. So if you know about anyone who is homebound, please uh, let me or let Deacon John know so that we can make the schedule and reach out to all those people. I think so far we have some uh, 35 uh, people on our list, uh, I believe. But I'll be happy to go and see everyone in our county if, uh, uh, if they want to. And also, if you know sometimes about people, they are not Catholics, but uh, are married to a Catholic or uh, something like that, and or maybe a friend would like a blessing, you know, at the hospital or a nursing home, I'll be happy to go and do that. If they are not Catholics, I cannot anoint them because it's a sacrament, but I'll be happy to go and uh, say a prayer for them, give a blessing. So... Please let me know if that's the situation as well. I thank uh, Dave Patton for helping me install the sanctuary lamp in the sanctuary. And uh, the, uh, because if you see that light, it means there is Eucharist in the tabernacle. So the only two days that typically that's going to be not there is, uh, of course, you know, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Otherwise, basically, we keep the Eucharist in the tabernacle all the time. And you also will see the statue of Mary on the left side and the statue of Joseph and Jesus on this side, on the right side. And these statues used to be in the cry room, and I think that's not a place for them, right? Yeah. They need to be in a place where more joy and celebration rather than, you know, okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. So... Don't take it seriously, okay? Sometimes I make joke. Please take your joke as a joke, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I just try to be, you know, sometimes I make, but again, take your joke as a joke. Don't take, you know, seriously. I said Mary on the left side and Joseph on the right side, right? It's actually Mary on the right side of Jesus. The tabernacle the altar, and that's all represent Jesus. So when you look at it, you see like that. But in reality, Mary is on the right side of Jesus. Joseph is on the left side of Jesus. That's why this arrangement. Okay. This uh, week's bulletin, I request all of you to pick one. Because I have a long letter which I prepared. Of course, we have uh, discussed that in our parish council uh, for the last almost two years. Um, four pages of information in it. So it's going to be a London penance for you, okay? <laughs> Read all those four pages and understand it. And if you have any doubts, of course, you know where to go, right? You can ask me all the time, no problem with it. And uh, so on the right side of my right side, maybe your left side, on that wall, glass wall, you will see a lot of uh, images, designs. And uh, so when you read that, and if you look at that, you will understand what I am talking about. Again, some people may think, Father is making us pay a lot of money. No. I am not asking anyone to pay any money. I am not touching any money from the tithing that you put in the collection basket. I don't have enough money to pay the bills anyway. That's a totally different issue, okay? This is, if you like to be part of it, if you want to do something, let me know. As we have done all the other projects in the church, so far after I came, 
It's all based on individual donations. Somebody wants to do something, they are open to do that. So do not think that Father is, you know, spending all the money from our church account. Guess what? There is not much anyway there. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Time for birthdays and anniversaries. So those who celebrate anniversaries this month, please rise for a blessing. Anniversaries this month. Okay, I see somebody there in the back. Okay, perfect. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of these men and women so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So happy anniversary. <laughs> Time for birthdays. Those who celebrate birthday this month, please rise for a blessing. Birthdays this month. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your sons and daughters who recall today the day of their birth and rejoice in your gifts of life, love, family, and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So happy birthday. So these are special Lenten candies, okay? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday? Somebody? Oh, okay. Any birthday? Get them, yeah. Oops. Did you get two? Okay, good. Oops, I'm losing it, okay. Well, I think I have to change my basket. Oh, oh. That's okay. You can have it. The anniversary. Yep. Okay. Thank you. you too can have some. Just to celebrate with mom. <laughs> Any birthday, anniversary? Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, I just to help her friends. Yeah. Want them to fight. I think something is wrong with my basket. <laughs> Did I miss anybody here? No? Okay. okay. Anniversary? Today's your anniversary. Wonderful, happy anniversary. Wow. 56 years. So 56 years today. Wow. Wonderful. I think I, go, I gave her. Did I give her? I was going to give her. That's when she distracted me. Yeah. Let me see anybody there. Okay. Bobby, I need a different basket, okay? This is not working. Thank you. Anybody here? Oh, yeah, anniversary. I see that. You have an anniversary? Oh, sorry, birthday. <laughs> Thank you, anniversary of birth, okay? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was not wrong, okay. It's your birthday? Good. They came all the way from, yeah? Oh, that's okay, fine, yeah, that's fine. They came all the way from Iowa, right? So they deserve, yeah. Thank you. And they actually, this couple actually uh, bought us those two beautiful uh, candles, candelabras, uh, for their anniversary. Thank you very much, yeah. Birthday? Yeah. Any? No? That's it? Yeah, you have to wait <laughs> till the end of the Mass. Yeah.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Son Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.